start off this morning with Florida A&M head coach Willie Simmons. The Rattlers fell at Troy this past weekend and returned home to host Jackson State this Saturday night. Coach, good morning. How you doing? Uh, good morning. How you guys doing? We're good, Coach. Uh, looking at last week's game, you had some early success, but turnovers quickly shifted the momentum uh, of the contest. Talk about last weekend's game at Troy. Well, you know, again, we have a saying uh, here um, that upsets and routes occur in the kicking game, and I think uh, that was evident in last week's game. Um, we, we marched the ball down the field on our first drive and um, missed a chip shot field goal, and that gave their crowd momentum, gave their team momentum. Um, we got the ball again and uh, lined up the punt, had a complete uh, miscommunication amongst our uh, personal protectors and got the punt blocked for a touchdown. And so, you know, when you give up points like that and opportunities like that against a, a really good football team, which Troy is, um, you find yourself in, in a hole that, that's a lot of times insurmountable. And uh, that's what happened with us last week. Uh, tack on to that the fact that we had four turnovers, three of them pretty much unforced. Um, you know, ball just slips out of the quarterback's hands on one. As he's throwing the football, they recover. Uh, we hand the ball off to the running back and uh, on the exchange, uh, put the ball on the ground. And... Um, and another time the turnover that we had. So, you know, four turnovers, a block punt, missed field goal uh, against a good football team such as Troy, you'll find yourself on the short end of, of, of a lot of those games. So a lot of fundamental things that we have to clean up. Uh, the encouraging thing is that all of those things are correctable, and uh, we began work on that this past Sunday. And I think the guys are energized, and, and they see now the importance of focusing on the little things, and, uh, you know, we can continue to do that and get better at that. I think we give ourselves a chance. We have a, a great opportunity to do that this week against the Jackson State team that uh, that's coming in to try to get their first win. So they'll be, of course, uh, spirited. Well, I've had my fair share of battles with Jackson State over the years in, in my six years in the SWAC. So I know what type of team they're capable of being. Um, I have a lot of respect for Coach Hughes and the job that he's done. And, um, you know, we got to be ready to play. So looking forward to the opportunity to get back home here at Bragg and hope to have a huge crowd this week. And, um, you know, hopefully we can – get back to playing good route of football and give ourselves a chance to be successful. And speaking of Jackson State, you mentioned uh, the history you had with them from the years uh, in the SWAC, but the difference in this year's team, they have a new offense pretty much, and due to a cancellation last week, there isn't really much film on them. So just talk about paying for a, uh, a Jackson State where you know some, something about them, but you don't know the full extent of what they're putting on the field this year. Well, you know, we only have one game to evaluate, and that's the, the Southern Miss game. And, um, of course, Southern Miss is an FBS opponent, much like we played Troy last week. So it's kind of hard to get a true barometer of how big, how fast, how strong they are because they played a team that they were uh, physically overmatched by. Uh, but, again, uh, I know Tony Hughes personally. Um, I, I, I'm familiar with Hal Mummy and the system that he implements. And so, again, I, I, I know that there'll be a team that comes in They'll look good. Um, Jackson State's always a physically good-looking football team. They'll have size. They'll have strength. And, um, again, you know, I think it's going to be a four-quarter football game. So we'll use what we know about them, uh, the history that uh, I have, that Coach Street has, our defensive coordinator, going against them over the years. We'll use a lot of that, and uh, we'll take a little bit of film that we do have to match up with what our previous thoughts were. And uh, we'll try to put a good game plan together. But I think it's going to come down to execution by our guys, uh, whether you have – Ten games of film to evaluate or one. At the end of the day, I think it comes down to our guys' effort, uh, ability to go in, play with effort, um, play with a chip on their shoulders, and um, try to do the little things right that we preach every single day. And if we do that, we think we give ourselves a, a good chance to be, like I said again, to be successful. Thank you, Coach. When I open up the call for questions from the media. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to register a question, please press the one followed by the four on your telephone. You'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you would like to withdraw your registration, you may press the one followed by the three. If you're using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before entering your request. Once again, to register a question, it's the one followed by the four on your telephone keypad. Our first question comes from the line of Trevin Jones with Howard University Radio. Please proceed. Coach, good morning. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing this morning? Hey, good morning, Trevor. Uh, coach, uh, if you could for me, please, just talk about the, cool, the two 
quarterbacks in the contrast. Uh, Ryan Stanley, your quarterback, uh, who had a pretty good game the first game out as well, and, and didn't have a bad game last weekend. Uh, and then their quarterback, uh, I think number 12, Derek Ponder. Uh, is there any similarity between the two quarterbacks, and how are you preparing for Ponder? Well, uh, I think, you know, whenever you have a quarterback that's taking over a new system, um, it takes him a while to kind of get the feel of it. And um, we, we're experiencing the same thing here with Ryan. So he's making a lot of good decisions, doing a lot of good things, but there are also some things that he's still learning uh, in regards to the offense. And when you look at their quarterback, I think it's still a lot of the same things. Um, you know, he, he may be second-guessing himself on a few reads. Because, again, it's a little bit different. You know, practicing it and playing it in the game are, are totally different. So, you know, you, you don't – you can't really gauge his ability, again, off of one game. I think you, you look at the, the the scheme that they run, you look at his skill set, they match up really well. I mean, he can throw the football, he can run the football, and so he, he poses a challenge for us. And our defense has to do a really good job of identifying where he is, knowing where he likes to, to launch the ball from, and attack those spots. And if we can do that, get him off his rhythm, um, because it's a rhythm-based offense, um, I think we have a chance to, to, to have success on the defensive side of the ball. But Again, he's a guy that, that you definitely have to be aware of, uh, and it's a, it's a quarterback-driven offense. And uh, if he can get rolling, um, they have the ability to put up points in a hurry because, again, Hal Mummy is one of the revolutionary guys in the air raid system, and uh, he's had success everywhere he's gone. And, and it's only a matter of time before he'll start to have that same success at Jackson State. And, Coach, my last question for you is this. Um, you have uh, decent running backs in Ricky Endless and, and Devin Bowers, and you also have two good receivers in, I believe, Marcus Williams and, and Chad Hunter. Um, can you talk about those gentlemen and how, how um, important they are to, to your offensive attack? Well, our offense is predicated on getting the guys to playmakers in space, and they're all playmakers, and, and we want to get them in space. And Marcus Williams had his best game last week, you know, five catches for over 100 yards against Troy. Um, Chad, you know, we're still – trying to find a way to get him the ball more. Uh, he had two touchdowns in the first game, called back for penalties. And, um, you know, we missed him on a couple opportunities last week. So just got to continue to get him involved. He's a very dynamic player. And uh, right now we're running back by committee. Uh, Ricky starts the game. Devin comes in. But we also have three other running backs, uh, two other running backs that are playing a bunch of snaps as well. So um, it's that delicate situation that in, in the backfield where you have a, a, a lot of guys that can, that can tote the mail. Uh, you just got to kind of figure out the best way to get them all involved. So as a staff, we're trying to come up with creative ways to get those guys touches to keep everyone happy, to, to maximize their ability. But, again, when, when you have a lot of playmakers, it's a good problem to have. But, again, it can keep you up as a, as a play caller and, and, a, and a schemer to try to figure out how to, how to spread the ball around and keep all those guys happy. Coach Simmons, always a pleasure speaking with you. Coach, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. And as a reminder to register a question as a one, followed by the four on your telephone. And Coach, before we uh, close out, just talk about the play of your defense. You had six tackles for loss and three sacks last week. Uh, just talk about their play overall. Well, I think they're a bunch that continues to play with high energy. And, um, you know, that's, that's our philosophy on defense. Play with a lot of energy, play with a lot of passion, and good things tend to happen. Uh, we're not perfect right now. You know, we've made our fair share of mistakes and definitely had a, a, enough missed assignments to, to put ourselves in bad position. Um, but, again, that's, that's been a point of, of emphasis for us. If we can get lined up properly, if we can communicate, make the right calls, uh, we have the talent to be able to be uh, pretty, pretty dominant on that side of the ball. So, that's two weeks in a row, though, that we've had multiple sacks, multiple tackles for loss, and uh, I think that bodes well for our football team. But there are a bunch that continue to play with a, with a chip on their shoulders. I think our defensive coordinator, Ralph Street, does a phenomenal job here in, in the defensive staff of uh, putting those guys in position to make plays. And um, they're a fiery bunch, and uh, they'll have a tall challenge this week playing an up-tempo spread attack in Jackson State. And uh, hopefully they'll you know, continue to put up those type of big numbers and, uh, again, continue to set the offense up to, to have the short field. Well, Coach, thanks again for speaking with us this morning, and then we'll look forward to speaking with you again this uh, this time next week. All right. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Florida a m University will face Jackson State University at home on Saturday at 5 p.m. The contest will be streamed live on ESPN3. We are now 
joined by fourth year Bethune Cookman University head coach Terry Sims. The Wildcats defeated Virginia University of Lynchburg this past weekend and will head south to Florida Atlantic on Saturday. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning, Ryan. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Coach, the numbers speak for themselves uh, last weekend, as you said, a school record for points scored. Uh, talk about Saturday's win over Virginia Lynchburg. Well, I think, you know, coming off of the, the showing that we had uh, two Saturdays ago, I think it was, it was good for our football team. It was great to see those guys go out and, you know, do the things that they're coached to do and, and, and play together and, and, and maintain their focus. And uh, for a game like that, you had so many uh, people had career highs, and especially uh, – your quarterback, uh, 12 of 13 for nearly 300 yards. Uh, just talk about that game and uh, the confidence you think that I'll uh, carry over from that point. Well, I, I hope the, the confidence uh, of, of this entire team continues to uh, stay high. You know, Akivas had a, a great game on Saturday. You know, he just came out and, and he was a quarterback that everyone knew he, he could be. Uh, it's, it's his time in this program, and he showed that on Saturday. He, he led the football team. Uh, he ran the ball when he needed to, but he also stayed in the pocket and, and delivered the ball down the field uh, to a number of our receivers. And speaking of receivers, uh, just talk about Malik Jackson's performance, 160-plus yards on just four receptions. Yeah, well, you know, Malik is, is, is a, a weapon that we're happy to have. Uh, he's a deep threat. But, you know, he runs great routes. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, came to us from Florida State. He's a graduate transfer. Uh, I think the best thing about him is uh, Malik is a, a guy that's always looking to learn. He's a true student of the game. He's a hard worker. Uh, and you can tell that by watching him on film. You watch him every day in practice. He, he's going to go 100 miles an hour every rep. And on Saturday, you know, it, it turned out well for him because he was going – 100 miles an hour, every rep, running good routes, and, you know, he, he caught the ball well on Saturday and had a great day. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to register a question, please press the 1, followed by the 4 on your telephone. You'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you'd like to withdraw your registration, you may press the 1, followed by the 3. If using a speakerphone, please lift your headset before entering your request. Once again, to register a question is the one followed by the four on your telephone. Our first question comes from the line of Ty Miller with Power News and Sports Radio Network. Please proceed. Hey, Coach Sims, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, Coach. Uh, I'm sure you've taken a look at the tape of Air Force and FAU. Uh, what did you see with the Owls that uh, most concerned you uh, with Lane Kiff's team? <laughs> Speed. Uh, <laughs> when, when you look at, 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 FA, at the FAU team uh, that we're going to play, they're, I think, faster than they were last year. Uh, they're they're big and they're fast, you know, and, and they don't do a lot, but what they do, you know, they're very efficient. And, you know, when, when you look at a football team like that, uh, you definitely have to throw week one out uh, when they played Oklahoma. They, they were a, a little bit outmatched, but uh, you can see that they, they came back home and they put the work in because against Air Force, you know, it was probably a better opponent to, to gauge them by. And they, you know, they, they ran their offense, you know, and on defense they, they pressure you and they have a lot of athletes, uh, you know, in all all of their, their, their positions. You look at, um, you know, the, the receivers and they run a lot of uh, jet sweeps and, you know, they try to get those guys out in space and, and let them use their athleticism, which is, you know, a smart thing to do. We just have to make sure that we're reading our keys and, and we're staying at home and, and, and stay focused, and I think we'll be fine. 
Coach Lane Kiffin does a lot of the same things he did at Alabama. So one thing he likes to do, of course, is go long. And that running back, Singletary, is pretty good. Give me some thoughts on him and, and, and you know, more so on their wide receivers, like you mentioned. Well, uh, you know, Singletary, he, he's a, a great running back. And when you look at, at the, the things that, that he does, uh, he, he's an explosive player. He, he, does, he does a lot running the ball, but, you know, he can also catch the ball. As you, you, you mentioned earlier, he, he's definitely a weapon, but they have a stable of receivers, and they keep those guys fresh, running, you know, in and out of the uh, of the game. And they play, you know, they play a couple different quarterbacks also. So um, just looking at at all the athleticism they, they have, you know, again, I think we just have to make sure that we're disciplined and, and make sure that we're playing with great technique. And I, I think we'll be we'll be okay. And how will a game like this best prepare your team for the MEAC conference run that's coming up? I think it, it helps you increase your, your 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 game speed. When when you play teams, you know, like Florida Atlantic, and then uh, you know, like uh, Troy did, uh, you know, like Fam did against Troy. You you, you heard uh, Coach Simmons earlier. He just he said they made a couple mistakes, but when you play teams like that. And you see that that your team, you know, can go out and match up with those guys. You, it, it helps you when you play, you know, teams on your low because you're gonna have to play faster to keep up in the game. And when your game speed increases, I, I think that that works well for you when you get in conference. Thank you, Coach Sims. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question the line of Trevin Jones with Howard University Radio. Please proceed. Hey, Coach Sims, how you doing today, Coach? I am excellent, Brother Jones. How are you? It's always good speaking with you. Hey, Coach, uh, in this game, Florida and Atlantic, they have a you, – you were speaking about the receivers earlier, and the wide receiver coach is Coach uh, Terry Harrell, Coach Fleet, uh, who used to coach here at, here at Howard. Um, with him, how – have you gotten to speak with him, and how impressed are you with the development that he's done with that type of – and the third part of that question is, would that give uh, FAU an edge? Because he's very familiar with Bethune Cookman and his defense. Well, you know, I, I've, I've been North Fleet a long time. Uh, he, he's one of my good friends, and yes, I have spoken with him. Um, tried not to speak with him any over the weekend or, or this week, you know, because we <laughs> play him. But um, I, I'm very impressed with with. with you know, the development of the receivers, I cannot say I'm surprised. I mean, you know, just knowing the type of guy he is and the type of coach he is, uh, you would expect his, his position group to play like that because that's the type of guy he is. Um, I do think, yeah, they have, you know, a little bit of advantage with him understanding MEAC football and, and knowing us. And, you know, he knows the number of the guys on our staff and he knows this football team a little bit. So that probably gives him advantage a, a little bit, but, you know, that, that doesn't really concern us. We're just going to go out and, and, and play football and, and put our product on the field and see how it matches up. Always a pleasure, Coach, and good luck to you this weekend. Thank you. Oh, I thought you were trying to get some stuff for next week. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. I'm sure no further questions. Hey, Coach Sam, before you close out, uh, you played FAU before, obviously. So uh, just, just talk about preparing for uh, what they bring to the table and the playing on the previous year, does that help in your preparation for the current year, or you you address it like it's a, a whole different uh, situation? No. I hope, uh, you know, playing them last year definitely helps us because – you know, we can go back and reference last year's film and, film and see some things that we did wrong and, you know, some things that, that worked against them. So it definitely helps. Uh, we, we, we have watched that film a few times, and, you know, we, we've gone back and forth looking at different things. So it definitely helps us in preparation. Uh, they have some new wrinkles because they, they have some new coaches on defense. So on the defensive side of the ball, they'll be a little bit different. But uh, – Obviously, 
having a new offensive coordinator also, but Coach Kiffin is involved in the offense, so that hasn't changed a lot. So it, it, I think it, it's helping us prepare offensively and special teams-wise uh, a little bit, but you still have to expect some wrinkles because those, those guys, um, they're going to come with something new every game. You, you see it from watching the Oklahoma game you know, to the, the Air Force game. So we just have to make sure that we're prepared and we're ready to go when we get the field. Coach, thanks for speaking with us this morning, and we will look forward to speaking with you once again next week. All right. Thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. So, Doom Cookman will travel to Florida Atlantic, better known as FAU, on Saturday at 6 p.m. The contest will be shown live on Stadium TV. We will now travel up the road to Dover, Delaware, as our third call this morning features Delaware State University head coach Rod Milstead. Delaware State fell on a road at St. Francis last weekend and will head to Western Michigan on Saturday. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Coach, uh, talk about last week's game at St. Francis as you moved the ball early and made some plays on special teams. We did. We uh, we, we we were able to to uh, recover. A, uh, a fumbled uh, punt and take it back uh, for a score. And uh, offensively, we moved the ball. And then, for some reason, uh, things started going south on us uh, uh, rapidly uh, in terms of our defense. Uh, we were uh, uh, got stuck offensively and then uh, kept giving the ball back to St. Francis. And when you play a team that uh, is well-coached and well-disciplined, uh, that they got it going. Uh, they got it going, and they got it going in a big way. And uh, we had to uh, play a lot of uh, younger guys, and uh, we used last week as definitely a learning curve for our program in terms of being uh, prepared and getting our younger guys more opportunities to play because we have a lot of freshmen on our team that uh, are needed to play now. So we got some growing uh, pains, and, and we got some learning to do, but we'll be, we'll be just fine. And for the second state uh, straight week, you outgained your opponent on the ground. Uh, this time, Mike Waters led the way with 100-plus yards. Uh, talk about his play uh, this past weekend. Mike Waters is a big a part of what, what we do here at, at Delaware State. We want to run the ball, of course. Uh, we want to run the ball to set up our, our, our passing uh, game and uh, you know feeding him the rock as, as much as possible, and especially after uh, Bryce and Eileen. Uh, took a, a big hit on our on our kickoff team, uh, which put him out of the game. So we Mike uh, picked up the load and uh, was able to, to to gain some yards uh, you know, on the ground. But you know we still got to be able to pass the ball. We can't be one dimensional. Uh, so we're still working on that as well as getting our, our passing game off on the ground. And uh, the shift to the other side of the ball, Brian Cavacante, five tackles for loss. Uh, double-digit tackles. Just talk about his uh, performance uh, at that uh, position. Well, Brian was challenged last week uh, uh, to make a statement uh, in practice, and Brian came out with a big chip on his shoulder because we knew Brian could play better than he did at Buffalo. And uh, what we saw uh, last week against St. Francis, what we expected uh, for Brian to do. We knew that he could do it. Uh, he just had to be pushed to, 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 that, to elevate his talents because Brian is a big role model on our football team to our younger linebackers on how to practice and how to work. So he, he kind of wrote the script last week uh, of what our younger guys need to, to prepare for and how they need to prepare, and he did a phenomenal job. Uh, we are so happy for him. But like I told him, you know, that performance last week won't be good enough against Western Michigan. we got to continue to elevate uh, his game and push him to, to to heights that he's never gone before. But he's a heck of a player for us, and we're glad to have him. Thank you, Coach. We're going to open up the call for questions from the media. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. For a super question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. You'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you would like to withdraw your registration, you may press the 1 followed by the 3. If using your speakerphone, please lift your handset before entering your request. Once again, to register a question is the one followed by the four on your telephone. As a reminder, 
to register a question is the one, followed by the four on your telephone keypad. Coach, I got a question about Western Michigan. They're a few years removed from a New Year's Day bowl appearance, but they're under a new coach, obviously, as a, uh, the former one moved on to the Big Ten. Uh, talk about what you've seen from the Bronx in preparation so far. Well, one thing about them uh, is that they're able to move the football. They have a, a very good quarterback who can, can beat you in the air, and he can beat you with his feet. Uh, their running back, uh, Bogan and Bellamy, a two-headed monster, uh, they're very good. And we got our work cut out for us. And then they have a transfer uh, wide receiver, a uh, young man by the name of Drake Harris, and then the freshman, Reed, who's done a phenomenal job uh, elevating himself up the depth chart. So we got our work cut out for us. Uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, they're 0-2, but understand, they, they played uh, Syracuse, and, and they scored a lot of points, and then uh, they played Michigan, which is, you know, one of the best teams in the country. So uh, I'm quite sure they're going to come out at home and and uh, and be more than, 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 than ready to play. And we, we just got to go up there, and, and I've told our guys, we got to get better. That's the biggest thing. That's what I want to see our guys do is constantly get better every week. And uh, we want to take a step this week. And we got to pay for mistake-free football. Those guys are going to be, you know, big. They're going to be fast and not taking anything away from their program. But we have a good football program here in the Delaware State, too. Although we're 0-2, uh, Western Michigan's 0-2. So uh, we got to go out and play mistake-free football and, and give them uh, everything we have to be successful. And also, you played Buffalo, uh, which is a opponent from the same conference. So, uh, does that style of play help you in terms of knowing what to expect on Saturday? Oh my God, yes! It was it was a great experience to go out to Buffalo and, and and play that game day, you know, the opening day. Our guys got a chance to see uh, what it's like to be in an FBS stadium, uh, the whole setup, the game day process. So, we, we've had a, 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 a I want to say a preseason of what the MAC play is like in FBS. So uh, I'm looking for for big things for our guys this time, not to be uh, nervous because we played a MAC opponent that's, you know, eventually is going to play Western Michigan. So um, we're, we're looking forward for the challenge. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us uh, to, 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 to go up there and, and play well. Uh, but, but it shouldn't be any surprise at this time like it was in Buffalo, not knowing what to expect. We know what to expect. We know what to pair, prepare for. And uh, like I said earlier, we're looking forward to the challenge. Hey, Coach, and before we close out each week, uh, pretty much has made this one of my favorite segments. Uh, first week you talked about having new toys. Last week was your conductor. Uh, you have anything to share for us before we close out on uh, what to expect this week from you? Well, this week I just want us to, to focus and finish. That's what I want us to do. I want us to focus and finish. Focus on the task at hand, okay, and then finish the game. That's what I'm looking for, and that's what I've shared with my guys this week. We're going to focus on doing things the right way, you know, being more sound in everything we do, and then we want to finish every play so that we have an opportunity to finish the game. Well, Coach, thanks again, and we'll enjoy talking with you, and we'll definitely speak with you this time next week. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Delaware State University will face Western Michigan on Saturday at 7 p.m. The game will be streamed live on ESPN Plus. Late last week, and will host Savannah State this Saturday in Washington D.C. And this is a non-conference contest. This is not a conference contest. Coach, good morning. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Coach. Uh, last week. Looking back at the stats and the play-by-play, -play, it appears most of Kent State's uh, early success was due to self-inflicted wounds. Uh, just talk about last week's game at Kent State. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, second opportunity to play uh, an FBS school that uh, you know we, we we were close with last year, but the last year doesn't count as counts what happens this year. And, and obviously, the turnovers or the sloppy play on our part. Uh, were indicative of kind of how the game went. You know, they outplayed us, they outcoached us. Um, you know, they, they did a good job of protecting of uh, protecting their quarterback, and so some things happened that you know we we didn't we didn't do a good job of protecting the ball ourselves. 
and you know we we, we self inflicted some things that had shown the previous game. So you know, um, hat goes off to you know to Kent State. They did what they needed to do and had to do for their first home game and their first win. We didn't do enough, and so um, you know this this week our preparation um, is more about us improving a lot of things that we do. And, and, and taking care of some of the things we have to make sure that we're, we're consistent with. We just weren't consistent enough at that, you know, during that game against them to give ourselves a chance to win. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a humbling experience, but it's a season of game that you have. We're, we're back. We're at home, and uh, we're playing an FCS opponent now. And, and uh, you know, it's important that we, we make the corrections so we can, uh, can, we can, we can move forward. And also talk about Dedrick Parson, uh, a name many of us probably have not heard. Uh, had a solid game in terms of the receiving yards. Just talk about his play and what he brings to the unit. Yeah, you know, no doubt. I mean, um, the game, you know, sometimes you, when you play young players, the, the game and the bright lights of it at the big stage, you, you, you get the paralysis by analysis. Um, Dedrick, you know, although a guy that was here last year was a walk-on guy that had a chance to go in the game, and he performed. He performed on a on a long uh, touchdown pass catch. He had a couple of very physical runs. You know, he does some things on special teams, so he's he's earned the right and the ability to an opportunity to uh, to play. You know, to play more significant reps. So, uh, kid from Philadelphia, very humble, but um, a very hard worker. I mean, he's one of the hardest workers on our team, and and given an opportunity. To he took it and uh, uh, and showed that um, you know that he's ready and willing to compete you know on a play by play basis. So you know hopefully his attitude, his energy will continue to keep fueling this team and uh, and allow guys like him you know that are, are waiting to get a chance a, a chance to get on the field and, and play because he he's deserved it. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, please press the one followed by the four on your telephone. You will hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you would like to withdraw your registration, you may press the one followed by the three. If using a speakerphone, please lift your headset before entering your, your request. Our first question comes from the line of Trevin Jones with Howard University Radio. Please proceed. Coach London, good morning to you. Coach, how are you feeling this morning? Trevin, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well, sir, and thank you for your time. Coach, um, in the game, I want to speak first about Kaden, if you don't mind. After having a game like he had the first game and then having a, an experience like he just had this week, could you see or uh, will you see uh, the maturation as far as his development and his focus as a leader? I saw he was fired up in, in, in this game uh, trying to bring the team back as, as he was trying to get attempt to come back in the second half. Yeah, you know, um, it, the maturation process is, is ongoing as the season goes on, and you know you can't let the highs get you too highs or the lows get you too low. And you know obviously when you have, you know the disappointing for, thing for us is we've got eight turnovers right now, and all of last year I believe we had, you know, 11 for the season. And so, you know, and, and that, it depends on you know what you do with the ball. So there's some decisions, you know, that in the maturation process that a young man has to make you do to how you protect the ball and he, he's aware of that he's very cognizant of it but at the same time you know when a quarterback touches the ball 100 percent of the time you know then uh, it, it's important what you what he does with it so it's you know he's he's a guy that uh, is very resilient um you know we had a had a great team meeting yesterday and he talked about protecting the ball and making better decisions uh, and, and and being more consistent so the team we want to be is a team that's competitive like we were against Ohio and definitely not a team that we were against Kent State. So we got to put all phases because we weren't stellar on special teams as well. we got to put all three phases together to allow us to have some success. But the leadership qualities that he has, that he possesses, is something that, um, you know, you have got to have a quick memory and, and get over it and a short memory and get over it and then move on to the task at hand. And that's, you know, that's Savannah State who's also played two FBS teams. Um, that hadn't had success, and now they're looking to play their first FCS opponent. And, you know, I, I get it. One of the things that's going on, as we all know, is, is the weather and the impending weather. And I'm sure there's things that, 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 are, that are affecting, uh, you know, them and, and the travel up this way. But, you know, we, we gotta, if the game is on, we gotta, we got to block out those things and, and execute and rely on the things that can, that can help us win games. 
And Coach, one more question for you. When you look at the Tigers' defense, Savannah State, I'm speaking of, I know this team hasn't scored a point so far this season, and they, as you played, said, they played up, and they lost pretty uh, pretty bad uh, to those two teams. But on the defensive side of the ball, have you seen number 21, 58, and number 12? I think 21 is Donald Rutledge, uh, number 58 is Stephen Banks, and then number 12 is Isaiah Bennett. That seems to be the core of that Tigers' defense. Have you seen them, and what do you think of them that you have? Well, Trevor, you do a great job with your scan report because I'm looking at those names as we speak right now. And so you are you are absolutely correct. Uh, 58 Banks is he's an outstanding player. I mean he's a, he's a talented player, pass rusher. He'll run you down from behind. He does a lot of great things. You know Bennett also is again is, is an excellent player that, uh, that that does a lot for them defensively. And Rutledge, you know junior DB. You know he's uh, they do a good job in their secondary. They play several different co- coverages. Uh, they don't let you get behind them. Um, they're a veteran group. You know, you talk about the ones you just mentioned, the two juniors and a senior. So it, it's a veteran team. So, uh, but they're, you know, they're, they're players that uh, they show up on tape, and, uh, and and they are guys we definitely have to pay attention to. Coach London, thank you all, as always for your time, sir. And I wish you, of course, wish you luck this weekend. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question comes from Williams, Black College Sports page. Please proceed. Hey, Coach London. Uh, I know you talked about uh, Kent State's new coach and maybe a new attitude that they had at the school. Did you see on paper that they may be even better than uh, than the uh, Ohio team that you played the first week? <clears throat> well, you know, what, what you – what you see, different teams have like personalities that they, they adopt and they implement into their, you know, their, their game plan or, or who they are from a from from the standpoint of the, the personnel that they have. And what what you notice is, uh, you know, they are a very high up tempo offense that you know I don't know if you noticed that they would throw the ball vertical down the field, get lined up and throw the vertical ball vertical again down the field. I think they have the skill that can stretch the field and do those things like that. The running backs are good. You know, the, the, the quarterback was uh, was a guy that was added to the mix there. So, um, you know, he, he Coach, we, we talked before. I've, I've, I've met him. I've known him, him and, uh, and, and the things that he's done offensively that, uh, that can provide challenges for, uh, you know, for, for teams, particularly for their league. So um, it, it'll be interesting to see. You know, I, I talked about the beginning of the year, the middle of the season, and at the end, uh, I would imagine they might be a team that, uh, at the end, people will say uh, they were surprised and had a, you know, and have a good year.
when school closes and, uh, you know, the governor tells you to evacuate, you know, parents start to call. And uh, we, we had to make a decision that, uh, you know, may not be the favorite decision of everybody, but it's probably the best decision in regards to the, the safety of our kids. And also uh, talk about now your focus is not on football anymore, like you said, it's about safety. Uh, so how much time do you really put forth to that and – when can you really return to football mode, uh, considering the situation you're in with the hurricane? Well, you know, we're working right now to uh, ensure that all of our kids can uh, can get home or, or have somewhere to go. That's a benefit of us having, uh, you know, a ton of local and regional kids. You know, we can get guys to, you know, Tidewater and Richmond and D.C. and those places. And, you know, some of the kids we have uh, farther away, you know, they can go home with teammates. So that's kind of what – we're in, uh, you know, preparation mode right now for it. To, you know, something that we were actually prepared for just in case this did happen. Like I said, the majority of campus left last night, and we're getting our guys out of here as we speak. So, uh, you know, it's it's just going to be a wait and see thing. Uh, obviously, hopefully, uh, you'd like to think that, that nothing happens, but uh, I've been around these situations before where, you know, you don't want guys away from the family and you know not have adequate power and, and food and, and water and things like that. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. You'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you'd like to withdraw your registration, you may press the 1 followed by the 3. If you're using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before entering your request. Our first question comes from the line of Damien Sorlet with the Lynchburg News in advance. Please proceed. Good morning, Latrell. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Uh, doing well. Uh, with all, all the rain that's coming on, um, with the game being moved to December 1st, and this only contingent if uh, your Spartans are not playing in either the Celebration Bowl or the FCS playoffs, how do you prepare for a game that late in the season, especially when you, you close up uh, the regular season, normally the Saturday before Thanksgiving? Well, you know, I don't even know if you think about it uh, until then, but if we do get to that point, which, uh, you know, in, in, in all you know, in all seriousness, I, I'd, I'd much rather be playing in, in, in the Celebration Bowl because that means that we've had a great year. But if we do end up playing the game, I think we'll use it as almost a bowl game type of situation for our guys. Uh, you know, they get two weeks worth of prep and uh, you, you go and play the game. I mean, these kids love to play football and they're heartbroken that we couldn't play this weekend. And with it being an FBS team, um, you, you alluded to being a bowl game uh, type field. Do you is that kind of a rallying cry for the kids that they can play an FBS team uh, that's in state and where the fans can come and almost make it seem like a uh, a neutral site game with the you know Norfolk being only uh, three and a half hours away from Lynchburg. Well, you know, definitely not a definitely not a neutral site game. But I've seen uh, I've seen clips of uh, of the Liberty fans. Have been, you know, I've played in the stadium as a player and coached in the stadium as a coach, and I got to see the, the evolution of the of the football program and the fans as well. So it's definitely not a, a neutral site situation in, a, in, in regards to the fans, but I think it would be a great opportunity for uh, uh, us to play, uh, you know, a, a great program in the state of Virginia. I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of football in the state of Virginia, and us being able to play uh, FCS and FBS programs from our state. With the these last two weeks, with uh, going back to, to Saturday with the multiple delays and only playing one quarter against James Madison to now having a game postponed. What does that do in terms of the rhythm that this team had been in after one week? Or do you look at it as a blessing that you get a chance to not have a lot of wear and tear on the players and give them some rest and also, you know, get more evaluation period? Well, you know, the, the thing, you know, I guess the biggest thing is that they're, they're not here with us. So it's really, there's really no, no football game in it because, uh, you know, as I said, we're in the process of trying to get our guys out of here. Our school's closing at, uh, at 1230 today, and, uh, you know, the governor's basically told everybody in this zone that they need to leave. So, obviously, we're going to try to get these young men back to their parents and kind of uh, play, it by ear, play it by ear in regards to the weather to see, see when we can get them back. Thank you, Latrell. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Lionel Luke Williams with Black College Sports page. Please proceed. Yeah, Coach, I was just wondering about how you guys played in the little bit of time that you had on Saturday against uh, James Madison. Well, you know, obviously.
especially uh, to be down 17 nothing, you know, at the end of a quarter. Uh, you know, we didn't start out great. Uh, I think we were kind of settled into a groove. Uh, the defense was playing actually fairly well. You know, one of the one of the touchdowns was a punt return that uh, we tackle very poorly on. Um, you know, James Madison's you know one of the top two or three teams. Uh, you know, at our level, and uh, you know, if you're gonna beat a team like that, you definitely got to uh, you know limit your mistakes, and then you can't you can't give up uh, special teams touchdowns. But it was a game that our kids were excited <coughs> were excited to play, and uh, disappointed that we couldn't finish. As a reminder to register a question, you may press the one follow by the four in your telephone. Coach, before we close out, um, you mentioned uh, the situation on Saturday. Uh, how did you keep your team uh, warmed up uh, during the multiple delays? Well, you know, it's just something that you have to prepare for, Ryan. You have, you have uh, you know, extra drinks, you have extra food, you have uh, – you know, extra stretching, and, you know, you, you try to keep the guys moving around, but, you know, to keep uh, warming the guys up and then cool down and warm up again, you know, we, we were looking at, I think, you know, 10 o'clock at night only having one uh, one quarter plate. I, I think Old Dominion finished, you know, close, closer to 2 a.m., and, you know, we just kind of, you know, thought about putting these kids on a bus at 2 o'clock in the morning and sending them back to Harrisonburg, you know, may not have been a great idea. My last question, Coach, um, even though, like you said, you didn't get a chance to play a full quarter, uh, but talk about your defense. Like you said, they pretty much have uh, been pretty consistent so far in these two games. Uh, what you know, what can you build on that based on uh, what you've been able to see on tape? Well, you know, we uh, we made one big mistake on defense, and that, that, that led to a touchdown. You know, we they ran a zone read play in the linebacker who was responsible for the quarterback didn't take the quarterback. So that was, uh, you know, their one explosive play. And, uh, you know, obviously then, you know, we stopped them. Uh, the second drive held them at three points after kind of getting a penalty on a field goal to give them another first down. So uh, I'm proud of our defense. You know, we've still got a long ways to go in terms of uh, not making mistakes and, and, and doing the right thing all the time. But those guys have been consistent to this point. And uh, I think offensively, you know, we're better than we were a year ago. So, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll be able to get back uh, – on the field next week and then start conference play. Coach, uh, thank you once again for taking time out and speaking with us, and our thoughts will definitely be with your team and your staff and uh, your university as we prepare for the situation at hand. Well, thank you, man. You guys stay safe also. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Norfolk State's game against Liberty uh, was postponed and will be scheduled for December 1st pending Norfolk State's postseason status. Our next head coach this morning joined us from Savannah State in Eric Rayburn. Savannah State fell on the road at Miami last weekend and is scheduled to head north to Washington, D.C. to face Howard University this Saturday in a non-conference contest. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Coach, uh, before we obviously touch on the weather uh last weekend's game at miami uh you were on the hurricane side of the field on several occasions to open the game and you had a pair of four down conversions uh, you had a chance to convert on, on the offensive end talk about last week's game yeah i know obviously um uh, you know it's a, that's a tough matchup you know miami is a really good football team particularly on defense um you know, defensive line, you know, and at linebacker, their their front seven was, um, I thought, exceptional. And, you know, we we, did, we struggled to keep everybody blocked. You know, it seemed like one of those guys was was getting off a block um, on every play. So, so it was it was tough offensively uh, for sure. But, uh, you know, we, I thought we played, um, I thought we played really hard in the first quarter. Um, I thought we I thought we played hard in the second quarter. Just just made more mistakes. Um, and then you know by the second half, you know we had we had a bunch of guys uh, hurt and uh, a bunch of guys that were just uh, flat out of gas uh, from playing that first half. And and uh, so our, our our execution wasn't very good in the second half. Uh, nor nor did we have the same kind.
kind of effort um, that we started the game with. And then this week, uh, you're scheduled to travel north to play Howard. And uh, just like your schedule, uh, both of their games were against FBS opponents. Uh, so basically from what you've seen of Howard and uh, based on what you've seen from your team, just talk about the matchup uh, that's scheduled for this weekend. Yeah, you know, Howard would be a really tough matchup for us. Uh, again, you know, um, uh, Kalen, a quarterback, you know, had a great season last year and uh, off to another fantastic start this year. So, you know, he's uh, he is super talented, you know, great passer, but uh, can, can beat with his feet too. Um, and then I, I think he has an excellent group of receivers, you know, um, really dynamic, you know, not um, – you know, two, they got they got at least two guys that uh, have been first team all conference uh, in the MEAC during my short period here. So, um, so he, not only do they have a good quarterback, but he has some he has some real weapons uh, to work with on offense. And then, you know, defensively, um, you know, I I, I think they're uh, drastically improved from uh, when we played them in 2016. Um, obviously, uh, play a different scheme now and and. Uh, now in year two, it looks like you know, it looks like they they've been able to um, recruit guys to to fit their scheme, um, and it looks like uh, the guys understand what what they're doing defensively even better now. So, so it, it'll it'll be a tough test for us for sure. And obviously, all the uh, news is focusing on the potential uh, track of the hurricane, and you're no stranger to making preparations for weather. So just talk about preparing um, with uncertainty uh, with the game this week. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I, this is my third year uh, living in Savannah, and, you know, we, we've already had two um, substantial hurricanes uh, hit us. And uh, this one looks like it's not going to hit uh, Savannah. It looks like we'll just have some, you know, some bad weather, you know, have to worry about, you know, maybe some flooding or something like that, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to hit us like it has the last two years. Um, so we're fortunate there. The, the unfortunate part for us is it, it does look like it's going to hit. You know, as on on a, on the path that we that we have to bust to uh, to get to Howard. So uh, I know our administrators are trying to monitor that and and uh, see uh, see if, see if uh, we're going to be able to. Uh, Take the same uh, same route we had planned on uh, traveling uh, up to DC. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to register for a question, please press the one followed by the four on your telephone. You'll hear a three tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another, you may withdraw your question by pressing the one followed by the three. If using a speakerphone, please use your headset before entering your request. Our first question comes to mind of Trevin Jones with Howard University Radio. Please proceed. Good morning, Coach Redfern. How are you this morning, sir? Uh, good morning. I'm doing well. Always good talking to you, Coach. Hey, Coach, you mentioned 2016, and that's when the uh, the Tigers got that 31 to 27 win um, over the Bison. And I know that both teams are drastically different from that time. Um, but you have one player that's back that was there then, and that's T.J. Bell, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he actually had a pretty good game that night. Um, has he rallied the guys around and, and, and kind of talked to them about um, playing the Bison and his experience back in 2016? Yeah, you know, TJ uh, TJ did play well that game. Um, it was a big reason why we were able to pull out the win. But uh, um, so, yeah, so we're, we're glad to have him back, uh, you know, this year. And, and uh, um, so I, I, uh, I know uh, – I know he's, uh, you know, he's been trying to do a good job, uh, trying to rally our guys after, you know, two really disappointing losses, you know, one uh, one-sided losses, you know, trying to trying to get our guys to kind of put those games behind us and and uh, try to try to bounce back and and uh, get refocused and and try to get back on track. So uh, obviously, you know. Defensively, they're drastically, yeah, really offensively and defensively, they're drastically different than they than they played in 2016. So, you know, in terms of 
what actually transpired in the game, you know, that won't be much, uh, that won't be much help to us. But, uh, um, but uh, I think, I think the, it, I think the focus for TJ uh, so far this week has, has tried to be, you know, more, you know, encourage the guys to, uh, you know, put the two disappointing losses behind us, and you know, let's let's try to uh, take a fresh start into this week and and uh, try to bounce back. Right, and coach, um, as far as far as TJ being the quarterback, uh, this week doesn't seem like it will get too much easier for him because when you're looking at um, defensive players in that secondary for the Bison, like number six Brian Cook, and then you have number seventeen Ty Freeman. Um, have you seen those three players, and what have you seen of them? And can you talk about the Bison secondary, if you don't mind? Yeah, obviously, I, I, I thought the uh, secondary uh, really looked good. Their past defense as a whole, you know, I thought had, they looked good. You know, even, um, you know, they, they, they lined up and played uh, against Ohio. Uh, I was, you know, I was born and raised in Ohio. I lived most of my life in Ohio, and um, I'm pretty familiar with those MAC teams and, and uh Ohio University is usually one of the top schools in the MAC, and you know they, they took them to the wire um, on on uh, Ohio's home field. So um, I, I was really impressed with uh, not only their pass defense but also their run defense in that game. You know because Howard has or uh, uh, Ohio has had a history of being able to you know play physical and, and really run the football well. Um, and then uh, I thought you know in the game against Kent State that you know they they uh, they gave us some some big runs, but uh, pass defensively, you know, uh, pass defense-wise, you know, I thought they played another really good game. I think Kent had, you know, maybe 150-some yards passing and, and uh, only completed, you know, right around 50% of their throws. So um, so I, I, was, uh, I was impressed. Uh, I've been impressed with their pass defense in both games that they've played so far this season. Coach Rayburn, thank you very much for your time this weekend. I mean, for your time, and good luck to you this weekend. Hey, thank you. I'm showing up for the questions. Coach Rayburn, thanks for speaking with us this morning, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you once again next week, and uh, stay safe out there. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Coach. Savannah State will head north to Washington, D.C. to face Howard University this Saturday afternoon in a non-conference contest. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. as the contest will be shown live on Sports Fever TV. And we are now joined by South Carolina State University head coach Buddy Pugh. The Bulldogs fell to Central Florida this past week and are scheduled to face North Carolina Central uh, in their home opener on Saturday at 6 p.m. The contest will be shown live on ESPN3 and rebroadcast on ESPNU. Coach, good morning. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? I'm good, Coach. Uh, can you hear me already? I'm outside. <laughs> yes, sir. I can hear you good. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, Coach, we'll jump right into it. Obviously, everyone knows the weather is a big concern this week. Uh, just talk about uh, what you're trying to uh, do with the team in terms of getting them ready for a game, but then also trying to monitor uh, a hurricane. You're exactly right, Ryan. We're trying to uh, figure out exactly what our next move is. It's hard preparing for hypotheticals, and you know the only thing we know for sure is that we're going to get hit by the storm. Uh, we've got to do what's best for both us and North Carolina Central's young men and fans and and everybody. But at the same time, we don't know, and it looks like it might be a little bit north of us, but. You know, we do think that it'll get a, a, a good piece of us, too. So we got our work cut out for us to figure out exactly how we proceed. Okay, Coach, and also talk about our last week's game um, mm -hmm. and what kind of stood out and uh, what you would like to build on heading into conference play. Well, you go into a game like that, especially with a top 20 team such as UCL, uh, trying to find positives, trying to make sure that you are uh, uh, can come out with something that you can uh, put out there to your kids as, uh, as as some kind of evidence that you can be successful. And you know, I thought we uh, uh, did a nice job of of, uh, of playing with those guys. We look like we belong, you know, in a lot of instances. And uh, we started the game uh, 
uh, by uh, getting a turnover that was overturned by instant replay. And then three plays later, we got another turnover. That quarterback is a is a Heisman candidate who, you know, can really throw it and run it. And, you know, I was proud of the fact that our kids, you know, did a nice job of holding them down. They, they did end up beat, beating us 38 nothing. But, uh, you know, we did show that we could. Uh, move the ball somewhat on offense, and we have some positives in both our de- on both our defense and kicking game. So, you know, I think we're ready now to go into the league. Uh, we just got to figure out how um, we can get into the league, you know, with the weather circumstances being as they are. But, you know, we're excited about doing whatever we can figure out what to do next. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, please press the 1, followed by the 4 on your telephone. You will hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you would like to withdraw your registration, you may press the 1, followed by the 3. If using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before entering your request. Once again, to register a question is the 1, followed by the 4 on your telephone. Our first question comes from the line of Ty Miller with Power News and Sports Radio Network. Please proceed. Hey, Coach P. How are you doing this morning, man? Hey, Ty. How are you? I'm good, Coach. Have you seen much difference on tape in North Carolina Central, uh, what they have done this season, as opposed to the last few seasons under Jerry Mack? Uh, not a bunch. I think uh, Coach Eastman and that staff, you know, are pretty much in place except for Coach Mack and you got some different bodies out there. They had some uh, attrition to graduation, and uh, you know, and that kind of stuff. But besides that, you know, they they're the same kind of looking team. You know, they're the same kind of process. So they had a tough opener against uh, Prince. Prince, I thought played real, real well. They had a guy that could really throw it around, and and then they come back last week against us in all the teams, and and, and they look like you know regular old North Carolina Central. So you know, we're expecting the same kind of football team that they that we've been seeing the last few years. You know when uh, Coach uh, Mack was there. Coach, for your team, uh, oftentimes we've talked over the years, and a lot of coaches like yourself have said you make the biggest improvement between week one and week two. Has that been the case for your team so far this year? I think we were definitely better this past week than we were the first week. Uh, we ended up giving up about the same amount of points. We didn't do as much on offense. We didn't score as much on offense, but we had about 250 yards of total offense this past week. And, you know, I, that, that shows evidence of the fact that, you know, that we are beginning to find, you know, some ways of uh, of, of being able to attack the uh, defensive uh, approaches that people are giving us. So, you know, we look like, you know, I think we've got a little bit better, you know, between week one and week two. And hopefully, you know, we'll continue. Hopefully we won't find a big break between week, week two and week three uh, before we can play again. Hey, Coach, do you feel like kind of like the, the preseason, as it will, is kind of over now that you've taken all those bowl championship teams, those bowl teams, and now you get into the meat of the schedule? Let's hope so. Uh, that's kind of the, the mindset that you got to have, uh, given our circumstances. You like to play really well and, and be in those games, but, uh, you know, that was not necessarily the case for us. So, you know, we got to put it behind us, uh, going about the task of continuing to improve as a football team and uh and keep our spirits up so you know we kind of just forget about those and move on into our conference race and think that 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 we'll be able to compete hey coach good luck this weekend thanks a bunch time thank you and once again to register a question is the one followed by the four in your telephone Uh, Coach Pugh, you mentioned your defense last week. They had three interceptions. Uh, just talk about mm-hmm. uh, their play against Central Florida. Um, you're exactly right, uh, Ryan. And we actually had a point for that was overturned that, you know, was a close, close, close play. But uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a sign of the fact that, 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 you know, that we begin to be able to make some plays, you know, over on the defensive side of the ball. I'm hoping that that our young secondary is gelling. Uh, we've got, oh, I guess maybe two or three freshman guys playing back there on and off. I think we played maybe about seven, eight, nine guys, you know, back there. But at the same time, we are young in some ways. So, you know, when you start seeing those guys start to make plays, and it gives you 
you know, a lot of excitement and uh, and confidence in the, you know in the future. And uh, I know you're talking about a bunch of young players, and uh, but I I have to bring this up about a former player, uh, Darius Leonard had a good NFL debut the other night. So just talk about what you uh, if you had a chance to see the game and uh, what you think his future will be. I didn't get a chance to see it, but I heard a bunch about it. a lot of our kids going and. You know, he had, I think he had a former recovery and had, you know, eight or nine tackles and some assists. You know, Darius is that kind of guy. You know, he's always, you know, in the mix as far as making plays is concerned. That's his deal. So, you know, we expect a long and productive career for him. I just hope he can, you know, continue to, to develop and, and stay healthy and all the kind of things you got to be, you know, to get, to get a, a good long career in the NFL. And speaking of having so many folks that have come from, uh, especially under your regime, that play well and move on to the NFL. Talk about how does that motivate the next group of kids? Uh, and especially, I'm looking at a name right now. Jalen Evans had 10 tackles. Obviously, they played before Darius, but do you think they look back and see their peers uh, perform well, and that motivates them to do well on this level? Uh, it does. Uh, and those guys uh, see the scouts around, and they know that. You know that they're gonna get that opportunity if they, uh, you know, if they go out and play well and produce and and, and handle themselves correct and all the things you got to be to be an NFL guy. The one thing you can bet on is that there are very few practices here that we don't have at least one scout and sometimes two. I'm sitting here now looking at three guys, you know, looking at a guy that's hurt that might not necessarily even be able to play again this year, but because he's got the, the measurables and you know the South Carolina State pedigree, you pretty much always know that you're going to get an opportunity if you come here. Well, Coach, uh, thanks again for speaking with us, and we'll let you go back to preparing for uh, this week's game and also stay safe uh, uh, with the weather. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. you. Thanks, Coach. South Carolina State is scheduled to face North Carolina Central in their home opener this Saturday at 6 p.m. The contest it's scheduled to be shown live on ESPN3 and will be broadcast on ESPNU at 10.30 p.m. Hey, we will now move on to Greensboro, North Carolina, as North Carolina A&T State University head coach Sam Washington joins us. The Aggies defeated Gardner-Webb this past weekend and are off on Saturday. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Doing well, Ryan. How are you? I'm good, Coach. Uh, some weather, obviously, related issues, and I know you're probably dealing with that also. Uh, so we'll jump right in and just talk about you don't have to worry about a game this week, but you have to worry about the safety of your uh, student athletes. Talk about what are you doing uh, at this point right now. Absolutely. Well, uh, the major concern is, um, you know, how much of this storm we're really going to get. Is it going to be rain, wind, uh, power outages? So. We're trying to get as much practice in uh, before this weekend uh, gets here. Okay, Coach, and we can go back to last week. Uh, the stats do not lie. 14 yards rushing, and you only allowed nine first downs. And plus, you had a worry-free second half pretty much uh, for the game on Saturday. Talk about the win versus gardner Wills. Okay, yes. Uh, well, we started out a little, a little slow. But uh, I thought they, we put, were able to put it together uh, there in the second half. Uh, one of the things I most was proud of was the number of penalties. We went from 14 the week before to uh, three. So, uh, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on um, those uh, penalties, and, and we were able to do a lot better with it. Also, I thought we ran the ball well. Uh, you know, we held them to 14 yards rushing, but we rushed for like 290. Uh, and that was uh, good to see. I thought we blocked well on the perimeter. The receivers did a fantastic job uh, blocking, you know, enabling the runner uh, to, to get on the second level. So uh, it was a very good week for us. And then uh, before we move on to questions, uh, you have a bye week pretty early. Uh, do, you, do, do you like it at this time of year, or you like to keep playing – uh, to work out some kinks? Well, I think it's, it's well needed. Uh, we have some kids that's banged up pretty good. We actually did not start uh, three offensive linemen last week. Three starters were out. So uh, this gives them, you know, a couple more days to heal and uh, as we prepare for conference play. Thank you, Coach. Uh, 
Thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. To register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. You'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you'd like to withdraw your registration, please press the 1 followed by the 3. If using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before entering your request. Once again, to register a question is the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. Our first question comes from the line of Jeff Mills with the Greensboro News and Record. Please proceed. Hey, Coach, how are you today? I uh, just wanted to, to uh, check in on your uh, on your health heading into this bye week. You mentioned it a little bit. Uh, you played this last week without two starting guards and, and your left tackle. Um, what? Uh, um, how, how healthy are you guys, and, and how badly needed is this bye week? Well, I'm telling you, it was desperately needed and um, well timed. Uh, we could not have asked for it to come at a better time, and I think the guys are really progressing well. Um, they will be able to practice on Monday, so um, we look forward to having all three of them back. Actually, uh, I think uh, Pettiford possibly would be the one that's um, most critical. Uh, it's very important mm -hmm. that we get him back because of the amount of time he spent, you know, on the playing field, and uh, he's a very vital part to our. Offensive line. With those, uh, uh, did, did y'all make a concerted effort to, to get back to running the football this week? Uh, and and how, how well did you, what did you see out of your second group of offensive linemen? Well, uh, I was very pleased with the second group. I, I'm telling you, those kids, uh, you know, we say next man up, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, they came out, uh, made very few mistakes, and gave great, great effort. And, um, uh, they looked like they belong. They really did. So uh, a couple of them graded out in the 80s, and that's very hard and difficult to do for Coach Ryan Madison. <laughs> Last one, uh, and, uh, and I'll be done. Uh, um, getting back home, it, it must have felt good after those two road trips to get back home. What, what was the atmosphere like on that opener for y'all? Very electric, uh, electrifying, uh, and it was um, well-received. Uh, the fact that... Um, the fans was very uh, in tune, and the energy was very high. Uh, it, it was a good feeling to be playing at home again. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. Absolutely. As a reminder to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. I'm showing no further questions at this time. Uh, Coach, you, your running backs last week, uh, we know what Markel Carway did, but then toward the end of the game, there was a uh, player named Jermaine Martin. Uh, kind of just burst out the scene. Uh, talk about uh, his performance and what did that do now for your offense if you have a two-headed monster? Uh, absolutely. Uh, actually, he went far beyond my expectations. Uh, you know he can run the football. Uh, he could do some things. But um, the way he was hitting those holes and um, the power and the speed, um, you know, together, uh, we're, in, we're in for some treats. I'm telling you, the, with the two of them, uh, they're going to cause some problems for some folk. And then also, uh, when I was watching the game and then I forget Amos Williams was even uh, there. That's where I, and he's had some experience. So you really have a lot of depth uh, at that position and also with Khalil at quarterback. So just talk about having a bunch of season and experience depth uh, to go along uh, with the rest of your team. Well, that's um, that's true, and, and we're blessed to have that. Um, we have uh, two quarterbacks that are very capable. We have um, – Several running backs are very capable, and I think we're very deep at the receiver position. Uh, like most people, the skill position uh, is really not a problem to find kids. Uh, at our level, the difficult part is finding the linemen to play in front of them and give them those opportunities, opening holes. So um, it's very uh, exciting.
exciting and, and happy, you know, to get those three starters back. And uh, with the bye week, just talk about what is your preparation uh, in terms of how do you handle it uh, as a head coach? Well, uh, this week is um, fundamentals. All, all practice will be predicated to fundamentals, and we have fundamental practice. Um, well, the weather permitting, um, and today, uh, tomorrow, and Thursday. And um, we'll give them Friday off, and possibly, we definitely, we'll give them Saturday off because of the weather. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get back on the field on Monday. Coach, I think we have one more question. Uh, stand by, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we do have a question coming from line of Jeff Mills with Greensboro News and Record. Please proceed. Hey, Sam. Sorry, I had I had one more. I want to ask you okay. a little bit about Ron Hunt too. He, he, Ron Hunt had sort of a, a, a big game for for y'all. How gratifying was that he for did. you to see that? What's Man, that, that was what's so that, that was so gratifying and uh, satisfying uh, because the talent you know is there, you know. But he right. had not produced it on the field, so. Uh, to see him uh, perform the way that he did, and not only catching the football and running routes, he blocked well, and uh, yeah. he brings uh, a lot of great energy to the team. And so he, he's a fun kid to coach and uh, fun to watch. What's that do for your opponents now? Because you, 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 they obviously have to prepare for Elijah Bell and and Malik Wilson and, and Zach Leslie. You add Ron Hunt to that. What's that do for for y'all's? Um, uh, depth on offense. Yeah, I want to say I'm gonna let them worry about that one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but uh, he he does. He can run, you know, so he can stretch the defense, and uh, he can get over the top. So um, he he's a talent. He's a true talent. That's great. Thank you so much. appreciate you speaking with us this morning and heal up this week and definitely uh, our thoughts are with your university and the team uh, with the impending weather and we'll definitely thank see you next week. All right, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Thank Keep you us so in your prayers. Thanks. Uh, North Carolina AST State is off this weekend and will return to action on Saturday, September 22nd versus Morgan State University. We're now joined by North Carolina Central's Granville Eastman. The Eagles defeated St. Augustine's this past weekend for their first win of the year and will head to South Carolina State on Saturday. The contest will be shown live on ESPN3 and rebroadcast on ESPNU at 10.30 p.m. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing? Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you guys. How are you? Uh, we're good. Coach, uh, talk about this past Saturday's game and what stood out in the win over St. Augustine. Well, uh, it was a great win. Um, you know, great win for the program. Uh, great win for the uh, for the team. Um, and uh, you know, I think I think the thing that stood out was that we showed some improvement in all areas, um, um, offense, defense, kicking game from the previous week. Um, you know, it was important that we showed you know that we got a little better with the tackling. Our blocking, executing, things like that. Um, you know, we were able to play uh, quite a few players. Um, you know, by having a game that we were, you know, in command of and played with the lead, and so some people got some experience. Um, so um, it was really just about you know improving upon the week before is what we strive to do in every game, obviously with the intent to win. And so I'm really pleased with that. And speaking of improvement, your defense had 11 tackles for loss and four sacks. Uh, is I know as a former defensive coordinator that should bring tears to your eyes. So just talk about their performance. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know, we we felt very disappointed about our previous week's performance. Um, um, surely we we knew we were better than that, <clears throat> and so we had to come back and <clears throat> excuse me, just really got down to fundamentals, tackling, fitting the gaps right, those sort of things. And so it was a real positive to see that uh, um, that our kids responded the way they needed to. And that we, you know, really corrected a lot of mistakes, you know, within a game. And so we need to build on that going forward. But uh, it was, I was pleased to see that we had that kind of production. Yes, sir. And I meant to ask this uh, several weeks ago, 
But uh, obviously, you, your defense, you had a few holes to fill. And uh, I did not, uh, I regret to, uh, to not mention the name Reggie Hunter. Obviously, that was a big void you had to fill. And who is capable of stepping into his shoes and playing at that level? I think the guy is Brandon Bailey. You know, and we, we're playing some young ones right now. Brandon Bailey, Pat Connor, and Jerome uh, Jerome Foster. You know, uh, two of them are redshirt freshmen. One is just a sophomore uh, with, with, with um, you know, a little experience. And so uh, there's going to be some growing pains in that area, no doubt. But they all possess the physical capabilities, especially Jerome and Brandon, um, to be like a Reggie. Um, first, they've got to learn the defense and really diagnose, you know, what, what, what people are trying to do to us. Uh, but in time, they will, there will be two guys that you will hear a lot of noise uh, uh, from in this defense. It's just going to take a little while for, for them to really get settled in on the level of competition and, and um, knowing their assignment. And before uh, we move on to questions, I just wanted to ask you, obviously, the uh, last few coaches all mentioned the same thing about the weather and uncertainty. Uh, just talk about preparing for a contest, but at the same time knowing there's a hurricane that is in the back of everyone's mind. Well, you know, um, my thoughts are always with the players in terms of, you know, any family members they might be, you know, care, uh, careful or caring for. Um, but, you know, uh, what we're going to try and do is focus them up and understand that we're preparing to play a football game. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of things can happen. Um, you, you, you can only control so much in life. Uh, the preparation from a mental and physical standpoint is something that we can control. Uh, whether the game gets moved, played, or when it gets played and all that, that will be someone else's decision and uh, the good Lord as well. Um, but that game is probably going to get played. And uh, when it does, uh, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to not be ready. And so um, that's going to be kind of our, our approach, and uh, we'll see what happens down the road. Thank you, Coach. We're going to open up the call for questions from the media. <coughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. You'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you'd like to withdraw your registration, you may press the 1 followed by the 3. If using a speakerphone, please lift your headset before entering your request. Once again, to register a question is the one, followed by the four on your telephone. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to register a question at this time, please press the 1, followed by the 4 on your telephone keypad. Uh, Coach Eastman, last week the name uh, Nail Ramadan, uh, haven't heard his name since pretty much 2016. Uh, just talk about his performance as his three touchdowns set the tone early. Oh, Nail was, uh, was great. You know, he was uh, very efficient. Um, he did everything pretty much that we asked him to do as far as making the right reads, going with the right place with the ball. Um, I check a time or two. Um, the young man is very, uh, very, very consistent, very poised. Uh, the thing I love about Nia is he never really gets outside of himself. Nothing really, really, um, you know, flusters him. Um, you know, he, he's, uh, he'll come out and he'll consistently, consistent, consistently do what you, what you need him or want him to do. And he demonstrated that and, and got us some scores and uh, really execute the offense very well. So I'm pleased with his, uh, his performance. And this week, obviously, you have South Carolina State, and uh, they played up their first two games. So just talk about preparing for a team uh, that really hasn't played a team on their level yet. But, you know, you know the history of South Carolina State. Oh, <laughs> do I ever. Um, big physical team, uh, I think. You know, uh, the score does not really ta tell about, you know, how competitive they are and, um, uh, you know, how physical they are. I mean, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with some legit FBS programs. And um, uh, the score may appear a little lopsided, but I think when you watch the actual play, you will see that these guys are uh, uh, they are going to be a handful. They're going to be a handful and, and a whole lot more uh, for us. Um, uh, Coach Pugh, I think, is going to have them ready to play regardless of what the environment is. They've got talent all over on the offensive side of the ball. I know they had to replace some, some um, All-American type, All-Conference guys at, at the linebacker on defense, but they're still they're, they're, that cupboard is not bare. And so 
on both sides of the ball, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, we better come ready to play or it's going to be a tough one for us. And could you uh, go back to last year's game? Uh, how much will you reference uh, last year's game tape uh, and try to put it into perspective for this year's game? Well, the only thing, you know, the biggest thing that came out of last year's game tape was, of course, it was an exciting game. And um, I think uh, the, the thing that we noticed is it's, it's going to probably be a slugfest again and that you can never give up. Um, you can never give up if you keep working hard, um, keep believing in one another, um, uh, playing together, then you can eventually win a football game. So, I mean, that was really the point, the lesson taken from last year's game. We've looked at the film just to kind of see what the carryovers are um, uh, from last year to this year. But outside of that, the, really the main, the, main, um, the main point of last year's game is that uh, we were able to come back in a game that we were down, and uh, that's because we stayed together, played together, believed in one another, and it's going to take the same mindset to uh, to have to have success this weekend as well. And before we close out, uh, the name Darius Royster, uh, he's had two good games uh, so far. Just talk about who is he and uh, what you expect from him uh, the rest of the year. Well, you know, Darius has been a pleasant surprise, and he's been coming on for a couple of years now. He's a, he's a former walk-on, um, a transfer from Norfolk. I believe he started school at Norfolk State. I don't know if he played football for them or was in their program. Um, but but Darius has been a pleasant surprise. He's, he's worked himself into incredible shape. Um, he was patient in learning our defense and really finding where he would fit in. And, um, you know, he's done a great job as a defensive end uh, the last two weeks for us. And I think that he's only going to get better as, the, uh, as time goes on. So very pleased with him. He's also a good young man, good student off the field, um, scheduled to graduate uh, later on. Uh, this year, and so um, I know he's he's been a he's been a real uh, a positive force for us on the defensive side of the ball. Coach, thanks for speaking with us this morning, and our thoughts are with the university and your team on the weather. And uh, we'll definitely talk with you this time next week. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. You too, Coach. Bye. North Carolina Central is scheduled to a South Carolina State in Orangeburg this Saturday. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 p.m. as the contest will be shown live on Watch ESPN and rebroadcast on ESPNU at 10.30 p.m. We will close out this morning's teleconference with our final head coach and Ernest Jones of Morgan State University. The Bears fell to Akron last weekend and will face the University of Albany on Saturday. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing excellent. How are you? I'm good. Coach, uh, talk about last. Oh, no problem. Talk about last Saturday's game in Akron and some early turnovers uh, changed momentum of the contest. Exactly. I mean, that's that's being our nemesis. We got to get over those those turnovers. But we felt like we were, you know, playing pretty pretty good. You know, going to, <clears throat> according to the game plan that we put out in front of them. But when you throw, uh, you know, interceptions that hurt you, and when you fumble the football, that hurt you. So we had three crucial turnovers at three. Uh, there's never a good time to have them, but uh, it put our defense out there in a bad situation. Our defense was holding up pretty good against this team and as they've been doing, you know, the first two weeks of the season. But as an offense, we need to protect the football and uh, put our not put our defense out there in bad situations. And uh, total uh, yards on the ground, he had 114 this past weekend. What adjustments did you make to nearly double your output from the first game? Well, as I've always said, we want to be able to run the football. So it's something new here, and it's something that we're trying to get to be really, really good at. All we asked the team was to get better from week one to week two in regards to running the football. And we just studied the film and put a game plan together. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what they're doing from a schematic standpoint. We're going to run the football, and we're going to concentrate on running the football week in and week out. So we're just going to continue to get better. I expect to have a little bit better outcome running the football this week when we face Albany. And speaking of Albany, uh, just provide a preview of, of what they bring to the table. Well, offensively, you know, they got uh, the test Verde over there at quarterback. He's good. He can make all the throws, good strong arm. He's not afraid to stand in that pocket. And then they got their running back. We didn't face him last year, Hanks. He's back this year. Uh, he's really good, good footwork, good feet, runs hard, can catch out of the backfield. So we feel like they're going to try to run the football down, down our throat a little bit. 
And then they got this special uh, wide receiver, number five, the Holmes kid. I mean, he's fast. He's electric with the ball in his hand. He makes all the plays. So we, we feel like they're going to be <clears throat> trying to run the football against us a little bit, and they're going to try to put the ball in Holmes' hand to, to make some plays. Defensively, um, we thought that they were good up front. I mean, they had some big guys up front, you know, and, you know, we want to try to run the football. We're going to have to get our hands on those guys and try to move them. And uh, we have some respect for their linebacker core. We think that, you know, what we want to do, they're going to be good at it. So they're going to be ready to stop us from trying to run the football, and we're going to try to do it. We might uh, be able to have some mismatches out there in the secondary where we might be able to throw the ball down the hill a little bit. But we're going to try to start it off by trying to run the football at their front seven. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. You'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been asked by another and you would like to withdraw your registration, you may press the 1 followed by the 3. If using a speakerphone, please put your headset before entering your request. Once again, it's the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone to register a question. Again, ladies and gentlemen, to register a question is the one followed by the four on your telephone. Uh, Coach Jones, talk about um, developing your quarterback. He didn't play against Albany last year, and so obviously their only recollection is what the film they have from the first two games. How about just trying to develop him in addition to trying to develop a running game at the same time? Yeah, well, he's getting better. I mean, he definitely improved from week one to week two. Uh, in regards to making some throws, he was a little bit more productive in week two. What we're trying to do is find the throws that he likes, you know, the concepts that he likes throwing, uh, what feels good to him, and then we're trying to concentrate on those things this week. So he's given us two or three concepts that he likes, and we're going to try to rep those two or three concepts at the same time we want him to be a threat running the football so that that can add to our run game we definitely need him to run the football and then we're just going to continue to concentrate on our run game but he's coming along we think uh, another week or so another week or two he'll be right he's, he's right where we want him to be he's getting better each week he's getting better every day in practice so hopefully uh they underestimate him and, and he'll take advantage of whatever opportunities they give him and each week uh there's a new name on defense I need to ask you about. One week it was Damari Whitaker, obviously Rico Kennedy, but Ian McBurrow has been pretty consistent. So talk about uh, who is he and what does he bring to the table? Oh, yeah, we're excited about those three linebackers. We believe that we have three of the best linebackers in our conference and probably three of the best linebackers in the co in, in the country. Uh, Ian is smart. He's fast. He's physical. He's athletic. He loves playing. And uh, he's a guy you're going to hear about him. You know, he's not going to miss very many tackles. He can cover the slot wide receiver man-to-man. -man. Uh, he's a leader. He's the captain of our, of our football team, actually. They voted him captain. So Ian is a captain, well-respected. Uh, he'll be a guy. He's a baby. He's young. He's like a sophomore. So you'll hear about him by the time he's a senior. But he's really, really good. So to have Ian, Damari, and Rico, we feel really, really good at our linebacker. And then you played. You opened the year up with Towson and then you played up uh, at Akron, and now you're back uh, with another FCS opponent in Albany. Just talk about uh, going from your level to up and then coming back. Is there a big difference you have to adjust uh, with the way you prepare for, for FCS and FCS? Uh -huh. Uh, not really, not for us, and I hope that I don't offend anybody, but it's really about us. I mean, even the two games we, we played again, we made mistakes, and it's not coach talking. We can get better at who we are, who our identity is, what we want to do on offense, what we want to do on defense, how we want to execute on special teams. We'll be fine. So it doesn't matter to us what the name is on the other team. We're going to prepare the same, but we're not, we're, we're not trying to uh, figure out how to – beat them. We're just trying to figure out how to be good at what we do. And before we close out, uh, we probably haven't had a chance to, uh, you probably, weather probably won't be a factor uh, with some of the other institutions, but we all know several players probably will have family members affected. Has that 
uh, been brought up during practice and how do you prepare for situations where that's going to be in the back of your player's mind, but they know there's a game at the hand also? Yeah, we definitely. We talk about it as a team, as a staff. We ask the question of our players. We go through our roster and see who has family here, who has family there, so we try to make sure that they're okay. Uh, it's been raining every day here this week, so we've practiced in the rain two days. So we're getting our, in our mind, you know, we're ready to play a wet game, a cold game, whatever type of game. But first and foremost, we want to make sure that our players are able to check in on their families uh, and um you know, let them know that we care. So it's in the back of our mind, but we're still, you know, trying to, you know, prepare to go play a football game on Saturday. Well, Coach, uh, thanks for taking time out and speaking with us, and we will definitely look forward to speaking with you this time next week as you uh, start the conference uh, play. Yes, sir. I'm excited about it. Thanks again for having me. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Morgan State University to Albany this weekend to face the Great Danes. Uh, kickoff is set for 7 p.m., and the contest will be available through the University of Albany's athletic website.